Okay, so those of you who were following the previous video, what we did was we did some shaping for our jean legs. We adjusted the crotch depth and the crotch levels, as well as we found the top of our jeans. What we're gonna do in this video now is we're gonna start to establish the width of the waistband, cut that away, and then for the back, we're gonna do a back yoke. Now for me, since my pattern pieces are starting to get a little bit messy, they have a lot of tape on here and a lot of corrections. What I've done is I went ahead and I transferred onto a fresh new clean piece of paper all of the changes that I've already done from my first fitting. Now at this stage, this would still be considered my first draft, even though I've gone through and I've made some fixes and changes to it. So for me, it's kind of a second draft. For some of you who are making pants at home and you're just making a quick pair of jeans, so far all you've done is this first draft. What we're going to do is we're going to start by establishing our yoke seam and the width of our waistband. So go ahead and take out your back pattern piece and let's start on that now. Okay, so where we're at now on making our custom jeans is we need to establish this back yoke area. And I'm going to be referencing this quite a bit, so you'll want to know exactly what the yoke is. Now when we take a look at our pants, we've already determined what's going to be the very top of our pants. And then we need to establish what's going to be the width of the waistband. And then we want to know what's going to be the bottom angle of the yoke seam. Now from this edge all the way down to your ankles is just your main pants. So this would be the main body, this is our yoke panel, and this is the waistband. Now at some point you should be wondering why? Why are we making a yoke panel here on the back? Also, when you flip this over, you notice that the yoke stops at the side seam and there is no yoke here in the front. When we come back here and we look at the back pattern piece, we can see here's the ultimate top edge of my jeans. Eventually, I'm going to come down and I'm going to have a waistband and I'm going to cut this away. What's left over, there's still some darts in this area. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to develop our yoke seam and we're going to close these darts and we're going to have a yoke panel that has no darts in it but it'll have the same cupping onto your back area. When we come over here and we're looking at the front pattern piece you'll notice that again here is the top of my jeans. Eventually we're going to do a waistband. When we put this waistband in here and cut that away these darts here are going to disappear completely. So for the front, you don't need to do any kind of a yoke to hide those darts. All right, let's get started on developing our yoke here for the back panel. Now the reason there's a yoke panel in the back is on the front here, these two darts are going to disappear. On the back, these two darts, we need to keep them in some way. But if you notice on jeans, there are no darts in the back. So if I put some kind of a seam in here, I can turn these two darts into just a panel and then delete everything else below that. So for this yoke seam, usually it's high at the side seam and then it comes down low at center back. Obviously, you don't want it to get too low below the crotch level line or else it's going to look funny because it's going to start to go inside underneath between her legs. So we want to come up a certain distance and we want to come down a certain distance. So here's my inch and a quarter waistband. So again, this is going to be the height for my waistband. So then I know that I'm working below this for my yoke. So now you can see the yoke seam. This will be my yoke panel. That will be my waistband. Now if you take a look at these two pairs of pants, basically this is my store-bought pants, and this is a mock-up that I did for my dress form size 4. On this mock-up, 
I just did a little tiny inch and a quarter waistband. And then here on the store-bought pants, this is a inch and a half. Now, right now, we don't need to know exactly how wide your waistband is going to be. But the measurement that we want to know is from the top of your pants at center back coming down to the top of your main body and the bottom of the yoke. So we want to know this measurement right here. Since I was able to measure it right on the dress form using my rough draft mock-up, you can see here I have this was the top of my pants and then I'm measuring down here to the bottom of the yoke and the top of the main body. A second way to find this location on your pattern piece is if you have a favorite fitting pair of jeans and you're changing how high or low the top of your jeans are but you still love the fit of these jeans you can always match up the crotch level at center back and come up here and find where they have the, um, the top of the main body and the bottom of the yoke. If you're doing the exact same height as your favorite pair of jeans, then you can line up that height with the top of your pattern piece and then come down again and you can measure to the top of the main body and the bottom here of the yoke. And there's also a third way that you can do this. If you're not sure where the top of your pants are, you could come all the way back to the top of your natural waist. So this goes all the way back to your original block sloper. And you'll line this up with the hip level line. And then you can measure from your natural waist down to wherever you want to have this bottom of the yoke and the top of your main body seam. Once you know that location, then you can pull this away and you can see where this will be on your new pant draft with the new top edge. So for me, I went back to my mock-up. Here's the top of my pants. This is the width of my waistband and then this is all the way down to that yoke seam and I've put my mark here on the paper. Now the next thing we want to know is on the other side of the yoke, how far does it come down the side seam? Something you want to know is the width of the waistband is going to also determine this location for the angle of your yoke. Now for me, I'm going to stick with one inch and one quarter for my waistband. But keep in mind that that's a pretty narrow waistband. It's just my preference. You can obviously do an inch and a half or menswear. You might even want an inch and five eighths or an inch and three quarters. So it's up to you what you prefer. Now that I've established this is the width of my waistband, I'm going to go ahead and just add another three quarters of an inch going below that and this will connect and become my yoke seam. So if you take a look here, we had an inch and a half waistband from our store-bought jeans and then the yoke right here is three quarters of an inch. So from the side seam here, we can come over and we can see here's the side seam. I came down my width of my waistband and another three quarters of an inch to get that location. Now obviously, the further we move this down, the more we will finish making all of these darts disappear completely. But the further you move this down on her pants, the further it's going down in the back and it starts to look funny because it'll start to go between her legs and you don't want that. Now take out your red and blue color pencils. We're going to start to divide up this area here and I don't want you to get confused on which part is the waistband and which part is the yoke. With your blue, start here at the top of your jeans at the side seam. 
come down to whatever's the width of your waistband. So for instance, I'm doing one inch and one quarter, and I'm going to mark that in blue. Now with your red, we're going to go below that, and this is the bottom of the yoke seam. We're going to go ahead and just connect this whole line in red. And make sure that you like this line because once you put red color pencil on here, it's going to be really difficult to erase. Now at some point, we're going to cut along this red line and we're going to separate these out. But I don't want to lose track of where this matches back to the main body. So in between the darts here, let's go ahead and put a double notch in one quarter of an inch apart. And make sure that your notches are square with the yoke seam. Now we can separate these out. And what you're doing is you're cutting along the red pencil, which is also the bottom of your yoke seam. Now let's focus on this pattern piece here. And let's go ahead and turn this towards us. So this is the top of your pants and this is the bottom of the yoke seam. Okay, so if you recall, we have measured from the top of the pants down whatever the width of your waistband is. So for instance, on mine, it was one inch and one quarter. I want to get the same mark over here at center back. So here's the top of the pants at center back. I'm coming down one inch and one quarter for you, whatever measurement you want. And I'm putting a blue mark here. Now this upper part is going to be the waistband. So in blue, let's write WB and make sure you're keeping it up high. Now this bottom edge here has a little bit of red on it. If you want to, you can also just make that a little bit darker and easier to see. And just above this, let's go ahead and we'll write yoke. And again, we still have our double notches right here. And this will match back to the main body. Now on here, we have our two darts. And there's also the grain line. And I don't want you to get confused on what the grain line is. So if it's really dark, you could lighten it down a little bit. And then your darts, let's make sure that these are dark so you can see them really well. Now what we're going to do is we need to make this dart and this dart right here disappear. And then we're going to have the shaping for our yoke and our waistband. We also don't want to forget that over here is the back and this is the side seam. So above this blue mark, put a CB for center back and repeat that here below it as well. CB is above and another CB below. And come over to the side seam and just as a reminder, we can put SS for side seam below that and above that. Now we want to close these darts. So come over here to center back and come over to your first dart leg and fold it. And let's do that again. Come over here to center back and then come out to the other dart leg and fold that one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to close each of these dart legs. But remember it does not come down to a point. So make sure your pencil is perfectly closing on top of the other pencil. So it's, it has a little bit of some width down here at the bottom. So 
So just take a second to double check that the pencil from here and here is right on top of each other. And the same thing here and here. After double checking your work, if everything looks good, let's go ahead and tape this down all the way. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to determine the curve for my waistband. But I also need this to match back to the front. So come over here to the side seams of the waistband and going above the blue mark all the way to the top of the pants, we're going to fold this right along that side seam. So bringing in my front pattern piece now, this is my yoke and waistband shaping from the back and I need to match the top edges with the front here at the side seams. And I'm taping that in place. Alright, so take out your blue color pencil. Now here you can see from the top of your jeans down the width of your waistband at center back. It's going to follow along here to the width of your waistband at the side seam and then eventually it's going to follow along all the way here to center front. So make sure you measure down from the top of your jeans down the width of your waistband and mark this in blue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my paper so the waistband is facing me and it's easier for me to come in here and start getting my measurements and start doing my shaping. Okay, so just so you have a sense of what you're looking at here, I have my center back here, moving towards my side seams, and then moving towards center front. Now the first thing that we need to do is, for the blue mark down here at center front, we want to make sure that the waistband is square with center front. Now the same thing happens here at center back. The next thing we want to do is, at the side seams, when we have this transition between the back and the front, we want it to be square for at least half of an inch on both sides. Now we can come in here and we can start to see what's going to be the shaping for the bottom of the waistband. And then I'll come back in here and I'll darken it in using my tools. What I want to do now is I want to turn this around so I can look at it upright. Now that I'm looking at it here right side up, I can see immediately that I feel like this is dipping down just a little too much on the curve that I did. So I'm going to move some of that back up. There, I like that much better now because it looks more straight across on the front of her pants. Now for me, since I have my dress form here, I'm going to go ahead and just pin this at center back and pin this at center front and make sure I like how the curve is still fitting along her hips and her side seam. Alright, so I just went and did a quick fitting back onto my dress form. I added a little extension here at center front and center back so I can come back and find what was that natural waist from my uh, block slopers. So I got the natural waist here from the sloper. And then I was able to pin this back to the dress form at center front and center back and just make sure everything fit really well. Alright, we're ready now to finish up these pattern pieces here for the back. Let's keep reviewing what's going on here with the yoke seam and the main body. Now if you recall, we had our double notches here at the yoke and the main body. 
Now, if you were to start to walk the yoke seam towards center back, you'll notice it comes up short. The distance that it's coming up short is the same distance as this dart right here. And then as we walk the yoke over here to the side seam, the same thing is happening. The side seam's coming up a little bit short. This distance here is the same as that dart right there. Because we've closed the darts here in the yoke panel and the waistband panel, we want to get rid of the darts here on the main body. Now how we can do this is we're going to trim away from center back and trim away from the side seams. The next thing we want to do is on the yoke, there's a couple sharp corners right here and here when we close the darts. And what we want to do is we want to come back and we want to smooth those out. So here you can see where the darts come down to the bottom edge of the yoke. You want to blend this corner out while also taking away the least amount as possible. So now the bottom of our yoke is a nice smooth curve all the way through. Now what I've done is I've taped the main body to the tabletop here. I'm going to bring my yoke into place. And here I'm lining up the double notch at the back. And I'm going to walk my yoke along with the main body towards center back. And you should notice that the yoke center back is shorter and the main body center back is longer. And this is correct. Let's go ahead and tape those together. Now again, you're going to notice that the distance of this dart here on the main body is going to be the same distance that these don't match. What we want to do is we want to trim away from center back heading towards the new center back. But we also need to be really accurate that as we're trimming it away, we're hitting our original center back at the waistband, so let's circle that. And then when you come down to the full hip level, we'll circle that. Now what we can do is we can start from the full hip on the main body, and we can come up to this new top of the waist at the waistband. And then as we draw this line, you'll notice that we're mostly trimming some of the main body, but we're adding just a titch to the yoke, and this is correct. Normally you want to trim more away from the main body and add less to the yoke. So hopefully yours is split something like mine. Now we don't want to get confused on some of these older lines, so go ahead and erase them now. Now come along here at the center back and let's go ahead and make the, the center back red for the yoke area and make it blue here in the waistband area. Now that we have the back lined up, we can separate these pieces and let's X out this first dart from center back. Now the changes we just adjusted was here at center back. We need to come over here and do the same thing at the side seam. Come all the way back to the double darts at the back and we're going to walk the yoke along with the main body over here to the side seam. Now here you're going to notice that the yoke side seam comes up short of the main body. And this distance right here is the same as that dart. Again, what we want to do is we need to blend these and we want to take away as much as we can from the main body. But if we need to, we could split the difference between the two. The most important thing is it's a smooth, even curve. Now there's one problem with lining up a new curve to take away some of this from the main body. This curve that we're going to put in here has to match the same curve as the front. What I want to do here is I want to bring in my front and I want to find that curve 
that I was using. I could see the measurement here from the front is giving my blend, and this is the top of the waistband here. It's, it's at five and three eighths. So then I can flip this over and I'll make sure that I'm getting the same mark from my variform curve as I'm blending this all the way down in here in the main body of the back. Now before I draw this line, I'm going to go ahead and just erase some of the old one. And I'm leaving it just light enough so I can still see the old one. I'll get my same mark as I have on the front. And we're going to blend this back down into going towards the knee. And I just want to come back in here and redraw anything that got erased from my horizontal bounce lines at the full hip and the crotch level. Now here we can see there's a nice smooth even blend going all the way back up to the top at the side seam. Now that we've blended the new side seam and we deleted some space here from the main body, we can come over here and X out this other dart. Now at this stage, leave your yoke and side seam of the main body of the back taped together. And take your time to tape it all the way across. And let's also tape this down nice and smooth to the tabletop. Now this side seam that we just fixed, we're going to want to darken that in a little bit more because we need to transfer this to the front. Now when we come over to the front piece, the side seam of the front no longer matches the side seam of the back. What we need to do is we need to change the front to now match to the back. So I'm just going to lightly erase my front side seam Make sure you can still see up here at the top of the waistband and the side seam because that will not change. And then of course, we're not changing anything down here at the ankle. Now the next step is we need to put the ankle of the front on top of each other with the back. And then you're gonna put the top of the waistband side seam of the back the top of the waistband side seam of the front, you're going to connect those together. Double check through your paper that the horizontal bounce lines are right on top of each other, the crotch levels and the knees. And when you look through the paper also, you should notice that the grain lines are parallel and center front and center back is parallel. And it's really important that you do this correctly, and it's really important that you do it right now at this step. All right, so I'm taking a nice, close, long look at mine. I have the ankles lined up here at the side seam of the front and the back. I have my center grains are parallel to each other, the full distance, and my horizontal bounce lines are stacked on top of each other. When I come up to the top here, I'm noticing that the front and back at the top, at the waist, don't match. So somewhere along the line of doing all of these, this hand work and changes and stuff, I'm off by just a little tiny sixteenth of an inch. Since I'm fixing the front to match the back, I'm going to go ahead and fix the front all the way up to the top of the waist. Now that everything's in its place, I'm going to just use my fingernail to scratch and I'm transferring the back new side seam to the front pattern piece. And up at the top here, I'm just making sure that I'm getting the exact same location as the back.
Now I can lightly see where the back has transferred onto the front, and I'm going to darken that in with my tools. Remembering the same mark that I'm using from when I got this curve on the back. And of course, I want to come back in here and double check this one last time to make sure I have the correct location at the ankle as well as the top of the waist. And my horizontal bounce lines are parallel or are uh, stacked on, on top of each other. And the grain line and center front and center backs are parallel. I know it's a little bit um, labor intensive to keep erasing and, and drawing and fixing stuff, but it's critical that when you're sewing this, you're not twisting or turning because you have two different side seams. So it's really important to have this perfect and to do it at this stage. All right, let's finish up with the yoke seam here. All right, well, let's separate these two pattern pieces and we'll finish everything up here. Now, since we're no longer using these two darts, let's go ahead and just erase everything completely so you don't get confused by them. And make sure you don't forget that there's two notches right here. Now, we want to add some paper back to the top of your pattern so we can eventually add some seam allowance. And then go ahead and just take a minute and darken this in. And let's also keep this in red so you remember as a beginner that this is going to sew to the yoke. Now that we have the back main body completed, Let's move this off to the side. And what we have here is our waistband and yoke. These are two separate pattern pieces. So get out a piece of paper large enough to where we can put a uh, waistband on the top and move it down and we'll do the yoke down below. Something that's really important on these two pattern pieces is the grain line. You can see here on mine that that grain line got really light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here and make it nice and dark. And we need to divide the two. So for instance, this is the grain going to the top of the waistband. This is the grain going to the bottom of the yoke. But we also want to show this is the grain going to the top of the yoke and the bottom of the waistband. Now when we transfer these to a fresh new piece of paper, we know that that's the grain line to match with the dots on your paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a piece of white paper behind this so it's easier to see through all layers. The next thing I want to do is I want to have my pattern pieces off to this corner here on my new piece of paper. And I need to line them up with the uh, matrix dots. So here's my grain line. I can see that I'll match up with these matrix, matrix dots right here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. And what we'll do is we'll start by tracing off the waistband. So this is the blue area. So what I'll do is I'll put a piece of tape facing up underneath here. Then I can line up the grain line from the waistband underneath. And when I push down on it, now it's taped together.
So let's go ahead and trace off the waistband pattern shape. Be sure to use the exact same curve on your side seam that you used when you fixed the front and the back side seams. Be sure to square up at center back as well as for about half of an inch at the side seams. And then of course Always use your tools once you're darkening this in to make sure you're getting a nice clean curve. All right, now that we have the waistband done, come over here to center back and let's label this CB for center back. And on the other side here, SS for side seam. And in the middle, we'll just lightly write on here, waistband. Here at the grain line, let's go ahead and get our grain line arrows. And the size that I'm doing is a size 6. So I'm going to go ahead and just label that right now. And then I'm going to put in today's date. Just in case I change this later, I'll always know which waistband is the newest waistband. Now, so far we traced off the waistband. Underneath here, we also have the pattern piece for the yoke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the yoke down, but I'm keeping the same grain line. and then I still have tape on the pattern piece from underneath. Now I can see the shaping for the yoke and I'm ready to trace that off. So here I'll be following the areas that are red and I'll start at center back and I'll sh make sure that the top of the yoke is square at center back. When I trace off the side seam, all I need is this little tiny quarter inch. But I know I still have to have my very curve all the way back up to that original top of the waist. So I'm maintaining the same correct curve. And then also the top of the yoke is going to be square with the side seam just for a short distance. Now down here at the bottom of the yoke, as well as the side seam and center back, these are no longer square at center back and it is no longer square at the side seam. So just concentrate on the curve of the red and stop at the side seam and stop at center back. Let's go ahead and get our grain line arrows. This is CB for center back. And then over here, SS for the side seam. In the middle, we'll write yoke. Really, we should write BK for back yoke. The size and today's date. Up here at the waistband, we should also put BK for back waistband. Now that we have our two pattern pieces transferred to some fresh paper, we can separate them from the older pattern pieces. 
And don't lose these. You want to hold on to these to keep track of them. Uh, just in case you have questions later when you do your fittings. And go ahead and put today's date on here as well. All right, so now that we've transferred both pieces to a clean piece of paper, we can separate these out. Of course, remember you want to leave lots of room so you can add seam allowance later, especially for the bottom of the yoke because we're going to do a three-quarter seam allowance. And here on the main body of the pants, here at the yoke seam, we'll also add a three-quarter seam allowance. Now you can see that the yoke will sew to the main pants and the waistband will sew to the top of the yoke. And then if you take a look here at your store-bought pants, you can see that this is the yoke panel that is going right in this area. And that's why there's no darts on the back of your jeans. On the next video, we're gonna start on the waistband from the front and then developing our front western style hip pocket.